Hey everyone, Queso Man Rules here. In the past, I've shown you guys how to install programs on your flash drive called portable applications, and I've also shown you guys how to run a virtual machine on your computer. Today, I'm going to show you guys a mix of the two, how to run virtualization programs off of your flash drive on any computer, pretty much meaning you can bring your operating system with you, which is really convenient. I have actually three ways to do this today, all have their own distinct advantages and disadvantages, so I'm going to show you each of them, how to install them, and then give you a brief overview of them. So the first one is Portable Virtual Box. Um, if you watched my tutorial in the past on how to uh, use a virtual machine, you'll see that I use VirtualBox. It's an open source program from Sun. There is now a version uh, that you can download from a site called Virtual or v, sorry VBox.me, and um, you can just click on the latest version here and download it. Links, all links will be in the description, of course. This is the latest version. Just click on it, and you can begin the download. After you've downloaded it, you will get a something like this. You've downloaded it by, either if it's to your desktop or whatever. And when you click on it, it'll just ask you where do you want to extract it. So just go ahead and extract it to your desktop. After you do that, you'll get a folder like this. And if you open it up, you have several things in here. This, however, will not be in here yet. I've just downloaded that already. But if you open up this right here, this is the only executable file in there, you'll get this message. And then shortly will pop up a screen like this. Now what you're going to need to do is click the download installation file of VirtualBox. They can't have it included in the original download because it was against the license agreements. Apparently it used to work like that, but it doesn't anymore, so um, what you need to do is go ahead and click that. It'll take a little while. It's like 7, 67 megabytes. It won't take a long time unless your internet's really slow or something like that, but go ahead and download it. And then after you're done, you need to, it'll actually show up there automatically, but since I've already downloaded it, I need to find it again. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now, depending on whether or not you want to run it on a 32-bit or a 64-bit, I'm assuming 32-bit since you're going to be bringing it with you, and not many systems out there are 64-bit yet, so probably 32-bit just to be safe. Um, you can compress the files to reduce the size, which I'm assuming will reduce speed, but obviously if you have a small flash drive or something like that, you might want to use it. I'm not going to, though. So I'm going to just also check Start Portable Virtual Box after extraction. Now I can click OK, and it'll go ahead and extract files and then open it up for me. And here it is. So that's just going to go ahead and one second we will get the familiar virtual box screen right here. It'll ask you to register. You can go ahead and do that if you want. I'm not going to here. But um, it's just like normal virtual box. You can go ahead and create a new virtual machine like usual. It'll save it. It'll save all your virtual machines on your flash drive. Just make sure you're not using up too much space on more than you have. So that's it. It's pretty simple. It's just like normal virtual box. The only thing that I have noticed that's a disadvantage of using this is that it does require administrator permission. So um, you know, if you're using this at school, you probably don't have administrator permission unless your school tech admins are idiots. So um, you're not going to be able to really to run it. I wasn't able to, so I looked for some other things that I could use. One of those being Q Manager um, or QMU, which is also QMU Manager or QMan or however you want to say it. Um, it is what, from what I've told, it's the it's the original pro, uh, program that VirtualBox is built off of. So it's very it's very similar technology to VirtualBox, but I've actually noticed that it has more of a VMware interface. So this has just a portable version in a zip file altogether. If you go to uh, this is a website right here, daverin.co.uk. I'll have a link in the description. Make sure you go down here to the zip file edition and download the latest version. Just click on it, and again, the download will be able to start. And once you do, you will get the zip file right here, extract it, and you will get this folder right here. So you can go ahead and click the executable file, and it'll ask you a couple questions right here, like if you want to install the accelerator. I would suggest it, so go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that, and as you can see, it just quickly installs. It doesn't take long. It starts up. So here you are. As you can see, it kind of looks like VMware, a little more simplistic than VMware, but sort of all together the same sort of thing. Got the sidebar. So you can go ahead and create a new virtual machine here. Just enter in your information, operating system, whatever. 
and it's it works just fine. The reason that I would um, suggest this if you're going to be at school or something like that is because it actually does not require administrative permission. Don't ask me why, but I have run this at school and it works successfully. I, I can boot up. The very last thing that I want to show you guys is probably the most exciting of all of them, probably the best. The only disadvantage is that it only has support for Windows XP right now because, well, you see in a second why, but, um, so you're not going to be able to run it on Vista machines or something like that. Luckily, I have, uh, Windows XP running at my school, so I can use it there if I want to. Thing is, though, for me to show you it in this tutorial, I would have to have Windows XP, and as you can see, I'm running Windows 7, but luckily, Microsoft has supplied me with the ability to run XP virtually on my machine, so I'm pretty much going to be running a sort of virtual machine in a virtual machine, so... Um, and right now it wants me to update because I haven't been on here in a long time. I'm going to go ahead and put that at full screen. Alright, so here we are. Now, uh, after you install it, um, you'll just get this little message right here. Very easy to install, just like usual. has an option. Obviously, this, um, like I said, this is made to um, be installed on your flash drive, so you can bring it with you. Now, pretty much what this does, I'm going to do my best explanation of it. It's easier just to show you, though is it uses core files on your Windows XP installation. It uses the host's core files, but actually has its own registry and such things like that, so you can carry applications with you, but it uses, it's much faster than a virtual machine because it uses core resources, but they don't affect each other in any way. No traces are left on the computer that you're hosting it on after you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up here just to show you guys um, what it looks like. I'll show you how to download it in a minute, where you can get it, and um, I, I can't show you the installation because I don't have the install file on here anymore, and it won't, the install file won't even run on Windows Vista or Windows 7, it just says that your OS is not compatible. When you start it up, you get a full screen sort of thing right here, it just says loading user profile, blah blah blah, as it goes and starts up, it takes a second. So after it started up, you have a, um, just a little interface here. It looks like pretty much a brand new install of Windows XP. The thing is though, as you can see, it uses resources that are already available. So as you can see, it's using the theme that I had on the host operating system, the uh, blue theme right here. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't have any applications installed. All it has is Internet Explorer. I have previously installed iTunes on here, and that's something I wanted to talk about, is the advantages of this, like you can bring your music with you using iTunes. You can allow your music to be used on this iTunes install and then take it and play it with you wherever you want. Another thing that's outlined on the site, which I'll show you in a minute, is it, is it even has the ability to play games. It shows you Crisis running on this. So as you can see, there's not any lag or anything like that. It's pretty straightforward. This is a little laggy to begin with because it's running on a virtual machine, but um, it runs very well. It's very. I, I would definitely suggest this over running a virtual machine if you just want to use your own install of Windows. If you're going to run Linux or whatever, go ahead and use virtual machine, but this works very well. Unfortunately, I don't know if this has um, if this needs administrative permissions or not, but um, it's very, very, very useful. I can definitely see why you would want to use this program. It's awesome, and as you can see, um, I just minimized that right there, so don't freak out. Um, I'm going to show you guys where you can get it right here. You can get it from mojopack.com. That's the name of the application, M-O-J-O-P-A-C. And they actually have a flash intro right here explaining all the things that you can do with it. And um, I'm going to go through a little bit right here. As you can see, Crisis right there running on Mojopack. It's quite cool, very useful. So that's pretty nice right there. Definitely, you know, one of the most amazing things I've seen in a long time, actually. Um, so all you need to do is go to Mojopack slash download, click download, and you will get the download for the installer. This right here, as you can see, it pops up saying it's not supported because it's on Windows 7. But that is definitely the best way to bring your operating system with you on a flash drive. So thank you for watching this video tutorial, guys, on how to bring your operating system with you using virtualization on your flash drive. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. See you later.